to really express himself as a batsman. Absolutely. So we're about to have our first delivery here. Hooper to Bascom. This one left alone outside the off stump. Coming in with the arm, no real turn on off a day just yet. And that, that, that first delivery to Bascom, that tells you the kind of mood he's in and how he has set himself, you know. If left it alone. This one was slightly quicker, a bit shorter as well. Punch back to the bowler. No run conceded. Punches it straight. Another dot delivery. So it's a good start from Asif. One is cut away, but straight to the feeler again. So four dot deliveries to begin here. It's fixture. Very good delivery, that one. But played extremely defensively. Um, Backlift came down kind of short there. Didn't rise to what you might expect in the T20. T10 game, sorry. Have a first meeting in this tournament so far? Possible. He gets a single off the last delivery, so he avoids the maiden. But a very uh, miserly first over there from Captain Hooper. And the Grenadine Divers, they, they will be pleased with this start. Yes, a good start by Skipper Hooper. Um, just bowling on the off stump. Bascom leaving a couple of balls outside the off stump, which I think he should have taken an opportunity to go over cover somewhere. It's a T10 game. You don't really have time to, to, to be looking to get another, another delivery in here to maximize on each delivery. But he's still there. It's one without loss. And Grenadine Diver should be very happy with the start of, the start of things so far. Absolutely. And we know not sure what he's going what he's about when he gets on strike. He will be going all guns blazing. So um, perhaps if Miles wanted to take a few deliveries to get settled, then he, he should probably look for the single as quickly as possible and let Haksha go after the bowling so that they would have that impetus here in the power play. They need to maximize the power play here. If they don't maximize the power play, there'll be too much work in the back end to do. And then when a, if a batsman do get out, it puts pressure on the batsman coming in. So they, at the top of the order, have to, have to take the chances in the power play. It will be Kevin Abraham to bowl his off spin. This is the opening pair that they have used with the ball, the divers. This one is swept in the gap, that's four runs. That's behind square, swept between short fine and the square leg, and that's four runs all the way. If you look at the field set, there's a man, a backward point, a short third man, a backward point, a short extra cover, and a short um, mid-off. And Abraham started that delivery just on the leg stump, but easy shot for Bascom. He just swept it, no protection on the onside, just a man, um, short, fine leg, and it went to the bungalow for four. This one was short and quicker. He was looking for the pull, quick single, taken comfortably in the end. Wiley Fields. I think that was a, a much quicker delivery. It had some bounce on it as well. Um, catch Bascom um, in a kind of awkward position. Lifted on him as well. Strike him somewhere on the body. And he picked up a leg by. Bascom has batted all delivery so far. This is his first delivery here, Haksha. We can judge by, any, by his previous innings. We know what he is about. And he'll definitely be looking to go after the off spinner, especially in that long on mid wicket square leg region. Error. And what you notice here, uh, Kenroy, and as we have that dot delivery, is that the off spin has elected to go over the wicket. So he doesn't want to give them the angle to hit the ball on the leg side. He's trying to bowl tightly on the off stump, not too much width. Um, Haksha is known for hitting the ball through the onside, so he's trying to bowl to his field, which is a 5-4. Good delivery there, another dot delivery. So the divers will be very happy with this start so far. Very good start, steady start by these bowlers, Asif Hooper and Abraham. 
One tries to go down the ground. Quick single being taken. Gets there comfortably in the end. Not well timed to the fielder there at mid off. Denson Hoyt. Seven without loss. On delivery remaining in the second over. Pick a delivery there. Trying to guide it in the gap behind the point. But no run conceded. So even though he was swept quite early in the over, he recovered well. And it's seven without loss after two overs. Yeah, good start by Abraham as well. Really good start. Um, after the first delivery, he pulled himself back, bowled the ball on the off stump, where he has his feelers to protect him. And he bowled a pretty good over there. So seven without loss over number two have been completed. Divers versus strikers. Game number 11, day number six. Yes, and the, we see here as if he's going to finish off his spell quite early in the game. This is, this is where uh, captaincy comes in, you know. Um, both of them had, have bowled two tidy overs. And if you have a weak bowler, I think this is where you could slip your weak bowler in. You know, if there's a, a, a little doubt in your bowling, this is where you take the opportunity to get this bowler in, 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 a, in a good area. In a, and although this is a power play, you know, this is where you, you kind of slip your bowlers in and get one or two overs out of them. Yeah, because it may it may just prompt a rush shot because of the, the city it start. Yes. Although I think they have to go at every ball at this point um, based on the way that they have gone thus far. Looking to go down the rung, Haksha beaten outside the off stump. Haksha is known for striking the ball um, to mid on straight back. And um, based on the field set, seems as though skipper, as if Hooper would be bowling the ball just on the off stump. He has to cut and punch the ball to back to backward point or cover point. Yeah, not carrying long enough, far enough for Hooper to make the catch. Leading edge there by Haksha. Both players have started quite sedately, which is very surprising. You. You must win game, but somebody really has to grab um, the ball by the horns and get things going here. These are two attacking batsmen, and, and I've not seen that from them. They are looking to take the single, um, stay safe, no risk being taken. And as I said before, this is what um, T10 is all about. You have to take risks in the power play. You have to maximize the power play, and strikers are not doing that. Yeah, and thinking about it, yes, the, the games that they have lost, it has not necessarily been because of poor batting. So it's not as if a batsman is saying, well, I have let down the team in the last game, so I'm trying to do my best now to, to make amends. So they really should have been uh, more aggressive. Just to drive this one, slow on from um, Hooper, tossed it, gave it more air, a little wide outside the off stump, encouraging the drive. Not a dot delivery. Three dot delivery so far in this over. Eight without loss, 2.4 overs. See there, it's prompting, prompting um, some shots that are not necessarily there. Uh, that one was well short of a half volley. Mines was trying to hit that one over mid off for a boundary. Strikers here are creating their own pressure. Their own pressure. That's another that delivery. And so after three overs, it is eight without loss. And uh, Asif has bowled two overs, none for two. One of the things here that we are noticing is that I'm, I'm, I'm going to put, my, put um, a statement here out on the limb. I would say even if they recover from this position and get a score of close to 100, once they lose this game, the strikers, if they end up and lose it, they have to come back and revisit these four straight overs as a reason why that may have been the case. Yes, I do agree with you. Um, the power play is there for a specific reason. And the strikers have not adopted nor taken the opportunity to maximize this power play. Knowing that you need a win, you need to be more aggressive than this. Of course, you have nothing to lose. Short delivery there by, by Abraham. Haksha was looking for the pull. And the, the divers are very loud on the field. They know they're on top here. 
And of course, you could always tell which team is on top by what you're hearing. <laughs> yeah, there's some loud cheers coming from the playing field, like from the stands as well. Seems like they have a lot of supporters. The skipper there, as a foop as usual, um, in his own way, encouraging his team, clapping his hand. You know, the team is really jared up. They really want this one. Strikers need to really get going here. Ball. And I'm just looking across my right shoulder and I'm seeing some students, I think, from the North Union Secondary School in the, in the Mike Finley Pavilion. Another dot delivery, and we know that Asif Hooper is from the countryside, so they are probably supporting Asif Hooper and his, yes, Asif I, Hooper and his team. I will suspect so. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Creating your own pressure, there's a loss of a wicket now, and there's more pressure on the batter to come. First wicket going down, eight for one. Strikers have lost their first wicket, that of the left-handed. A nice, simple catch there, easy because of the pressure, not getting away. Good catch by the youngster, and they have lost their first wicket. More pressure. Yeah, the shot was on the cares. I mean, it was there. It was short enough for the shot. But um, he didn't, was, didn't seem very balanced in the shot. He was swinging very um, loosely. He wasn't set in terms of his head position. So um, basically more swinging in hope as we see Thornton coming out to join the skipper Bascom, as we thought would have been the case today, that he would be promoted up the order. And I'd also like to see James coming in at number four for them. And they really would need the impetus being added to the innings now. They have already faced three and a half overs and they are not yet in double figures. Well, this is, this is a, 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 a position that I would have used Joshua James. Knowing that I didn't get a proper start, didn't get the power play, the runs in the power play, I would have used Joshua James here to propel this Illins. Not, not um, Thornton, uh, although we were, we were told that Thornton is a pretty good batsman. You need somebody to hit the ball over the top, clear the fence. And you have some, you have some, a, a, a good point there. Kenroy, as Abraham looks to finish off his over, last three deliveries of the power play, has taken one for five. This one is a poor delivery, and it's pulled over the field, down to backward square like boundary. Four runs, just a couple of bounces, short and dispatched. Yes, a poor delivery there by Abraham. Really an easy shot for Bascom. Shot on his legs, he was already in position. Pulled it nicely between the gap into the fence before. And his wheel a very fast outfield. Once it beats the infield, it goes over the ropes very quickly. Looking for the sweep this time, appeal for egg leg before wicket, but that was angling across him. Most likely would have missed the off stump. Likely pitched outside leg as well. That way, outside leg, um, hitting outside and as well. And this That's time short. he's out. This is Bascom. He's caught at short, fine leg, looking to go over the top, coming off the inner portion of the bat and going straight to the man at short, fine leg. So the end of a 14 ball, 15 ball innings, very indeterminate innings um, from, from Bascom today. I think feeling the pressure of his team's position in the, in the table. But I mean, today's a different day. You have to play the game that is before you. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Four overs bowl, two wickets down, 12 runs, two men back in the hut. Bascom goes for 15 from, nine from 15 deliveries. The end of the power play. Strikers struggling here at 12 for two. Divers have gotten the start that they wanted. So at the end of the power play, the batsmen dismissed. Uh, Bascom, the two openers, they have, they, have, they have seen the back of both of them. Bascom has gone for nine or 15 deliveries. Uh, Haksha ha was, um, and he was caught of um, Braxy Brown of the bowling of Abraham and Abraham had taken another wicket previously in the over um, Haksha he was caught by Imran Joseph of the bowling of Abraham two he made of nine deliveries so Abraham has figures of one and a half overs no it's actually overs. two overs one for nine yeah. two overs two for nine actually getting a wicket off the last delivery and Hooper he only went for two runs off his two overs so it's 12 foot 2 after 4 overs here. 
Excellent bowling by these two bowlers from the, the divers. They have started solidly and this is the start that they would have really liked to have and they have gotten it 12 for 2 and um, to join Turton, I think it's James. James has, has come here but four overs have been completed, 12 runs, two wickets already down. Vinci Premier League 4.0 and it's really playing field. We are here in bright sunshine game number 11 day number six and things are pretty tight here alanson wiley has come into the, the attack he'll be bowling his leg breaks pickish delivery on off stump but a good line i think this is a very good move by skipper um hooper um he bowled from the sudden end prior so he has opportunity now to bowl from the top end and the ball is getting on nicely as well a quicker one out the front of the hand. Not a leg break ball there on that occasion. Not a dot delivery. The pressure is mounting up. I think these two batsmen really need to just, just go for it. Well, these are two new batters. Um, they have just entered the crease and they would have to do much more than they normally would have been doing. Yeah, at uh, this innings as he pulled that one through mid wicket for another single. They need more than that. Um, to get them to a respectable total here. Absolutely, and it's a must-win game for them. They need to win. I think sometimes um, this is where character is built. When you're up against the wall and you really take the game by the scruff of the neck and you wrestle it in your favour. On his hit down the ground to the long off fielder, single. So it's over so far from Wiley, only conceding two runs so far. Wide call, interesting call. I mean, it was outside the, the wide line, but Thornton had made a big step across to the offside. Well, in the, in the eyes of the umpire, it's outside of the, the line, so. This one is hit over cover. Good feeling there by the man on the sweeper boundary. Abraham doesn't have a strong arm, so that's something that if they had known about it, um, that they would have considered running and pushing for two so no ball is called it's a free hit good opportunity for james to get his arms free and some blood flowing um, after having faced one delivery and probably to change the whole perspective of the innings from here on well 17 to 17 for two 4.4 overs and no ball being bowled here by wiley this is the time that uh <laughs> james should really release some pressure good length ball there and he's oh, run out. That's going to be trouble. He's run out. Excellent work by Shem Brown. James knows he's out. He's walking off. He knows he's out. And they sink further into the mire here, the four Charlotte strikers. Divers have an excellent start. A dream start here for the divers. Looking for their second win to go into the middle of the table. An excellent show by Brown. Look at that. Beautiful. And he's shot by how much? By miles, by miles, James goes back, run out to Brown, and Divers have taken their third wicket, 17 for three, they're on a high. That's a, that's a very important wicket there. So two are the, the other two that went by, because those are three of the more aggressive bat, batsmen who have gone back to the wicket. Well, and the, the three batters who have been dismissed are the most aggressive batters from the Martin lineup that I've seen, those of Bascom, um, James and uh, Aksha. Aksha those three batters are three aggressive batsmen the top order so they have gone back into the pavilion the score is 17 4.5 overs divers really doing an excellent job I think because of the weather the 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 the, the, the snorkels and the diving glass are working pretty nicely so they are seen very clearly under the sea under the sea water seeing the coral reefs and everything excellent visibility <laughs> and what 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 do you think should be the approach of these batsmen now they only have 5.1 overs left although they are in a in a, a bit of a pickle as a side do you well, think they should still they have to they have to still look to the aggressive route well they have to they have to look for runs as as um Thornton does there picking that one over 
um, find lead for four, they have to keep getting runs. But what they need to do is not lose a wicket, get to at least over number seven, number eight, where they could have a launching pad. These two need to bat and carry the score to at least, at least 60 runs, between 55 to 60 in the next two, three overs or so. And if they go to 55 or 60 over two overs, it will be, it will be some, some, some quick scoring. Um, but they need to try to see how much, how many they can get. I don't think that 60 or 70 or 80 would be anywhere near enough. Uh, and and uh, at 10 runs and over, they will still only get to 71. So they really need to to, um, to get going here. If they are to put um, a total on the board, that would put the Grenadine divers batting lineup under some pressure. Yeah, they need to get at least 100 runs. So they need another another what 79 runs to get in five overs. Uh, 30 balls, somebody has to play a cameo. Somebody has to play a cameo. So it is left up to Turton and Williams to do that for their team strikers. They have start very, started very slowly and they have paid the price of losing three wickets for, for that. And divers are really taking advantage of such. This one, new bowler out, uh, as well as um, Seal, Ron, Seal Roy Williams, who has come out to the crease. Let's uh, pull that one to mid wicket. Edwards is a new bowler. I was going to mention to you all here that I think that Asif Hooper would bowl maximum five spinners today based on what has occurred prior. I think he would go in, he would be going to his fast bowlers today at all. Yeah, I don't think so either. And maybe even so perhaps at the, at the end of the innings. Might up to go for them. Why delivery? Well, spin has worked for them so far. 5.1 overs, they have picked up three wickets, only 23 runs, and that should be deployed. Working. This one is hit high in the air. It's a chance. Asif, he takes catch. it. Very good, very good catch taken by, by Captain Asif. Excellent catch taken there by Captain Asif. He had to run all the way from the long off position, and he caught that almost, well, he caught it at extra cover on the boundary. So he had to run about 20, 30 yards to his left and Look he took that. it. Look at that. Beautiful judgment. Under it. Brilliantly done, Asif Hooper. You have taken a wonderful catch. Oh, wicket number four. 23 for four. Strikers. 5.2 overs, Allison. They are in some serious trouble. Yes, and it brings Donwell Hector to the crease. Hector is a very experienced batsman, so he would have to know how to approach his innings from here on. And to see if he can get his team to some um, semblance of respectability, even um, with this very slow um, and tottering start. Yeah, um, I think that is the striker's problem here is that they have lost wicket consistently. They have not gotten a partnership between anybody at all um, who has entered the wicket so far. They have lost their, three, their chief strikers, Skipper Miles Bascom, and the others have gone back cheaply. And the score tells you that as well. 23 for 4, 5.2 5 overs. Williams is on 1. Hector has just joined him. Edwards have bowled 1. 1 over so far for 2 runs. And um, Divers are doing excellent here. Oh. This one has been swung away for 6. Massive shot there by Seal Roy Williams. He got that one in the slot. And it was slug swept. He's not a big man, but um, he, he has a very true swing of the bat. And he got that one right out of the middle. Yeah, Silwal is one of the talented batters in this tournament. Um, he's been around for the past four VPL and we know his, his ability and his talent. And that is shown by the shot he just played. He has some beautiful timing as well. And he just whipped that over mid wicket into the fence for six. A really nice shot to open his account. Yes, very good shot. And, I, and I, I'm going to go back again, Kenroy, to the first three overs. You see, what happens when you when you have um, all those dot deliveries in the first three overs and you, you really get off to such a slow start. It means that from there on, everybody has to take some s serious risks. And of course, you're opening yourself out up to the possibility of losing a clump of wickets, which has actually happened. Yes. It, needed, it would have needed some luck for them to get through that situation and, and push on quickly in the following overs. But you really dig yourself a hole when you take that approach in the power play. Yes, and, and, and you can't be thinking that way when it comes to T10 cricket. You have four overs to maximise where there's feeling restrictions. You have to take advantage of that situation. If you don't, you would find yourself in trouble. 
teams have been um, strategizing and using bet their better bowlers in the middle of the innings to, to really keep the batsmen in check. And if you, if you don't maximize in the first four overs, you would find it very difficult to score in the middle and to the end of the game. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the game is quite short. It's only 60 legal deliveries. So while you may say, well, I want to take some deliveries to get going, while you're taking the deliveries to get going, you need to at least get some singles and some twos. That delivery is really, really at a premium. Well, they have batted a few this morning, actually a few more than they would have wanted to. But that's a game of cricket. It's 29 for four. The ball has been retrieved. No, I think a new ball has come up come out from the dressing room he has shot that very far and this one has gone he has gone again this has gone for six this one straighter and onto the roof of the frank thomas pavilion that's a big six by silroy yeah beautiful strike there by silroy pitching just on the middle stump he climbed into that and it went into the Frank Thomas Pavilion. A beautiful shot over midweek. It takes him to 13 from three. He needs to continue doing, doing what he's doing. And he seems like he means business, letting out some of the frustration of the scorecard on the ball here. And, and that's, that's a very good shot. It was um, a, a delivery that was just on or just outside off stump. And it gave him the length that he needed to get the leverage to hit that one quite a, a long way. Just to remind you as well, Sil Roy has opened the batting for strikers on several occasions. And I think his, his biggest total is when he opened the batting, you not know, for strikers. But today he's batting in the middle order. He has 13 from three. He needs to continue. This time, he goes for another six. So three sixes in the over. Sil Roy is on fire here. And he's bringing his team back into contention. He's saying, man, I don't want to just start this competition with four losses no way yeah, well he say he's sending a message to the bowler if, listen if you bowl this in my half you're gonna travel he has gone for three sixes so far um some excellent shot from him excellent shot from him here Silroy. and this one is likely to be another once it goes that high he's hitting with the wind so it's smart batting and it has on the roof landed on the roof of the frank thomas pavilion Silver. And that is not coming back down here. Silver. It's out of here. Silva have pulverized, <laughs> pulverized the bowling. The bowler there, three sixes, actually four, four sixes in a row, and he has taken up his taken his team up to forty-seven for four. He has twenty-five from five. What an over! Yes, and if he continues batting like this, then they have to um, order a, a set of balls from the from the factory because he'll be losing all of them. He's hitting them very far, very far. We saw Joshua James hitting one yesterday up into the top of the double decker, striking the top of the stand. That was a huge hit. But Silroy has hit a few where this morning. They have traveled all the way over to the Frank Thomas Pavilion. And I tell you, this is some serious hitting here by this youngster, Williams. And his twin brother plays for the Dark V Explorers, Seal Run. Uh, so. Very interesting here. So he continues after this. The over has ended. It's 47 for four. He has finished it with four sixes, as you could see there, wicket. And then he came in four sixes once well, he got back on strike. I think Skipper Hooper took a chance there with um with, with, with the, the bowler. And it didn't pay it off. It didn't pay off. And he went for 26. 26 in that over. Wow, a big over for the strikers. They are 47 for four. Now they have reverted to um, Joseph, who's been one of their bowlers. He will be bowling from this end, but he will be bowling to a new batsman, Daniel Hector, who haven't faced a delivery. So an uh, excellent over there by Williams. Um, that brings Hector into strike. And here we are, strikers versus Dark View Explorers. A ding-dong battle here. Single taken. And, and it was good, sensible batting also by Williams. He got deliveries to hit, yes, but to target that bowler at that point was very important. He saw that the captain was trying to slip in, a, a slip in and over. And he said, well, I'm going to take, take this by the scrub of the neck, see if I can um, bring my team back into contention. And even though the run rate is still a little bit low, um, a few, another, few more big overs and they'll be right back in it. 
Yes, a very good over there by Silver. He took the chances. That's what I was talking about early in the power play. You have to take those chances. He did that and he has propelled his team to 48 for four over number six point one is being bold here. A really nice over by 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 Silroy. This time he goes over, long off, and that's another six. And that one is a very good shot. That's a top shot. That was pitched up in his half and the mood that he's in, he's not going to miss out on those. He just climbed into that, stroke it over mid-off, into the fence for six. Another six to Silroy, takes him to 31. A beautiful knock here by him so far and he is doing the job which he was sent to do. Yes, and the young man, he has played 33 matches in the VPL. He has been in all the editions, 28 innings, four not outs. We'll come back after this delivery. Bottom edge, but it just goes through to the keeper. So he has four not outs, 367 runs, a high score of 59, which I think he made in the last edition, um, if I'm correct, or probably in the edition two. And he has faced 273 balls, having a strike rate of 134.43. He has hit 26 fours and 27 sixes. So one of those batsmen who hits more sixes than fours. And he's doing that today. And he has added more sixes today. <laughs> and no fours as yet. Well, he's not aiming for the bunk, um, inside the ropes. He's, open, he's aiming for outside of the ropes. Great batting here by Williams. 31 from 7. Hector is on 1. 54 for 4. 6.3 overs. Dive has been put, in on, been put under some pressure here. Good length. Good length being employed here by, by Joseph. He's saying, well, if you want to hit me, you're going to have to hit me off of that length and you're going to have to hit me into the wind. Uh, which is coming as we are looking on the screen here from the viewers left to right. So you'll be hitting into a, a pretty strong wind here at the Arnesville Plain Field. It's one of those stadiums that is open. So where, where you have that gap from the Frank Thomas Pavilion all the way over to the Players Pavilion. Um, I'll get back to it. This one is high in the air. Chance and taken. So they have gotten rid of... Um, Seelroy, but has he done enough to bring his team back into contention here in this game? Well, he, he perishes. He perishes um, for, for 31. I think they are looking at um, the, the foot. I'm not too sure what is happening there, but the catch was taken by Hooper. But a very good catch by him as well. 54 for 5. I think the umpire is going to check on, on the front foot if it's a no ball or not. I'm not too sure what is going on, but the catch has been taken and a very good delivery by Joseph. He pulled back his length, bowled it short into the pitch. Short into the pitch. Uh, I think that is good. Yeah, it from was my, close, but, my but he had a few, in, few uh, inches behind the, behind the, the line yes, there. Yes, that's pretty good. So, Silvoy Williams have perished to a short pitch delivery from Joseph. He goes back for 31. This little cameo has brought um, four challenge strikers to 54 for five. They need somebody else to come and play another innings like that. They need, they need a few more. They need a few more. And here's Richie. He's coming out to join Hector. Um, he's a fair enough batter, Richie. Doesn't usually hit the ball very hard. But he, he has played some innings in the past for some of his previous teams where he has struck a few over the fence in the VPL. So uh, he will be looking to put on a partnership here with Hector, probably to take the team probably to the ninth or the 10th over and uh, to see how many they can get from here on. But from where they were looking at five overs, at 20 other runs. Um, C. Roy Williams, he, he must be giving some um, commendation here. Yes, a uh, beautiful innings. Uh, well played, well played, C. Roy Williams. Unfortunately, you had to go the way that you did. But um, that is what the doctor ordered. At that time, you did a job. Somebody else needs to put up their hand and do a job like that as well to put the four Charlotte strikers in a better position that they are, than they are now. Short delivery, wrapping Hector. But the signal is if it's off the glove or off the body. Signal, so seem to come off the glove. And he takes a single. So it's 55 for five after seven overs. Three overs remaining. And where do you see them getting to um, at the end of the 10th over, Kenroy? They have another 18 balls to go. Hector is there. He's um, batted just about two deliveries. Richards have just come into the wicket. And um, <clears throat> they are doing pretty... Um, they are not doing too badly from where they started. They are now 55. But to get the ball over the fence, they need somebody to do that. And um, these two batsmen, yes, they could do it. 
but you have to contend with a bowler who has been doing exceptionally well at the back end of this tournament he has picked up four wickets and three wickets and he's very smart he's clever Stra will be taking up the attack from this end so it would be a difficult task for them to get a lot of runs from his bowling very experienced bowler and and this is the time of the innings um which is most effective and has been so historically to bring up some of his stats after this delivery Straw, he's in his first season for the for the Grand Indian Divers, but um, he has 13 matches. Um, he has taken 17 wickets in 13 matches at an average of 11. So he's definitely a wicket taker. Can't doubt that at all, um, Kenroy. He is. He is very effective at the end of the innings. Whenever he comes on to bowl, he creates opportunities, and most of the time they are taken. So a very clever bowler he is. All into Richie, who knows him quite well. This one goes over um, point to the sweeper. Good feeling, but they are able to come back for two. So good feeling there by Joseph. Seemed to have done himself a little mischief when he landed, clutching his right shoulder. What have been very impressive about the, the divers' cricket here this morning is that they have fielded brilliantly so far. They have not let anything go. They have not dropped a catch. They have not fumbled any ball. They have really improved on their feeling this morning. And that is something that we spoke about in the warm-up, in the, the build-up for the game. And uh, we saw something that sparked it may have been that brilliant run-out that Shembrong effected off of James. Yes. Those are things. These little things in this short format, is very, they, they are very important. The way you feel, the way you catch. Um, the tools, you stop the tools, you cut off the boundaries. These are things that are very important. This one looks like it's going right down to the throat of the long off fielder. And there goes Richie. Dismissed. Strat does what he does best. Contain takes wicket. Another wicket goes 58 for 6. 58 for 6. Richards goes for 2. And he takes another scalp and improves his figures in this VPL. Yes, and Asif, Asif takes another catch. It's his third catch for the innings. And it seems that the ball is following him. It might be a, a good sign for him for the rest of the day. Well, it is very important to get your best feelers in the right positions. Absolutely. And he has done that. He's a skipper, but he's on long off, where most of the balls have been traveling. I saw Joshua James really took in a fantastic catch down there in a game prior. Um, to this one and if it was somebody else there that catch would not have been taken a brilliant catch by him so those are some little things you have to get in place putting your right feelers in the right place so that they could be effective when they're supposed to be that one down on the boundary there from Alina as well yes the one-handed um, <laughs> leap of faith we would that say was, that was splendid <laughs> that was splendid <laughs> Appeal there, but he was well down the pitch, and of course, it seemed as if with the angle it would have mislexed some comfortably. But these two, I think, need to bat out the rest of the overs. Um, the batters who are to come, there's Ray, and probably Ray, and after Ray, you would not necessarily want to use up the rest of the batting. So they would, <laughs> they would want to ensure that they um, face the lion's share of these remaining 13 deliveries. Yes, um. <laughs> Hector has batted four deliveries so far. He has scored three. Lavi is yet to face a ball. That was perilously close to the top of the off stump. <laughs> Seemed to be another slow delivery there from Straw. Straw has bowled an excellent over here. Um, the first delivery went for one, the second for two, one for dog. Oh, look at that. Just missing the bill by a bit. Just a little bit, a coat of paint, a coat of varnish, and he would have gotten that. Yes, it's 59 for 6. They have two of us remaining. Uh, they would want to get at least 80 to give themselves um, some semblance of a score. Um, but I think 90 from where they were would be great. Wow. But it still may not necessarily be enough. And uh, you have bowling from the northern end. It will be jo um, Joseph who will finish off his quarter. Imran Joseph. So he'll be bowling to Donwell Hector. 
Well, Hector, three from four. Joseph will be bowling his second over. They need to get a score at least 75 or so. Another quick short delivery, and Hector so far hasn't been able to get to all of any of them. And so he's continuing that length to done with Hector. Well, a good length, a good length. It has worked for him um, during the tournament, and he picked up a wicket just, just a few deliveries ago. Um, he continues, continues to bowl well, continues to do well for his team. He's bowling at the depth, Joseph. And um, 60 for 6, not looking at a, a really good scorecard here, uh, strikers. Nobody have really strike for them except for a beautiful cameo by Silroy Williams. Good delivery by Joseph. In swinging Yorker, beats Scott and Lavion. Beats his inside edge. That one came in. The wind is, is aiding that movement. And we saw Ray yesterday bowling to Andrew Fletcher and getting the ball to dip in late. And you could see there, just as the last moment, it just comes in. Yeah, top delivery there. Top delivery there. As a coach, you would be happy with that. Hitting, the, hitting just on the tip of the boot, really. Fine now. This is what the ninth over being bowled. That is what is asked to be done. Let me go short again. Pull is not time. Hit in the circle. And they did not pressure the feeler for two runs there. And there was a slight misfeel. If they had turned for the two, they would have gotten it with well, the, the misfeel. Keep, well, the keeper didn't pick up clean as well. He didn't, uh, there was a couple of mistakes there. But uh, the mode, the mode of, of, of the strikers' camp and the batters are uh, not saying that they wanted it either. This time, Hector goes down the ground for six. And that is why he was bowling short to him all the time. He did not want to go into his half. And Hector took full advantage on that occasion. Straight down the ground for six. Joseph missing his length there, pitching it up. And Hector had some room and he really used it to the best of his ability. And smashing Joseph over mid on for six. A really good shot by him. The first positive shot we've seen from him um, this morning. Hector is a, is a former Winwood Islands batsman. This time, the extremely slow, slow delivery. And he has outfoxed him. And there he goes again with that unique celebration. I think the less said about it, the better. <laughs> marking his territory. Marking his territory. Hector goes back for 10 from 7 deliveries. Grenadine divers are in a strong position here. 67 for 7. Hikers really struggled this morning here. Nobody seems to be um, timing the ball. Nobody seems to be getting the ball off the square. 67 for 7. A really good morning. A really good morning. A good day here for the divers. They are doing well in the field. And Hector really didn't have any other option. Um, at this point, he really has to get going and he had to hit every delivery. Um, and so with just eight, seven deliveries remaining, um, eight when that delivery was bold, had to go for it. And he was deceived by the slowness of that delivery. Yes, um, something in his armory as well. He bowls a very good Yorker. He bowls a good short ball and now he has a slower delivery. So he has a couple of deliveries in his armory and he has used them very well so far in this game. Picking up wickets, bowling tightly, which is very important in this game. And he's bowling at the end of this um, innings. He has done extremely well for his team and for himself. So good bowling here by Joseph. Two for 16. 1.5 overs. You have one more delivery to go. And he'll be bowling to Ray Jordan, who will be facing his first delivery. This one is driven by Jordan down to mid-off. Sensible batting. He, he runs on the shot, so easy single in the end. Right now, they need to take every single. There should not be any dot deliveries between now and the end of the game. So Jordan will be on strike for the last over. Um, 68 for 7. And uh, at one point, they didn't look like as if they would even reach the 68. Um, it's really all due to the innings that was played by, by C. Roy Williams, that they're even in this position. But I don't think that um, they would be pleased with the position that they're in. No team would be pleased with this at 68 for 7. And, I, and it goes back to the start of this game, as I said. The team that starts positively, that starts on a right note, would win this game. And Divers did that from the time they went out. They bowled pretty well in the power play. Strikers didn't take advantage 
of that opportunity and they are now 68 for 7 68 for 7 a current run rate of 7.5 i don't think this is enough to actually uh keep divers um in, in this position they are and to get themselves two more points i don't think they have done enough Ross is bowling the last overs we would expect good yorkle and delivery again single taken by the new batsman who is ray brings Lavia on to strike. Cut and Lavia was taken to the cleaners yesterday by by a world renowned Spice Man. Uh, 20, 22 runs from his over, final over, smashing in the last delivery for six. Um, he probably needs to repeat that here on somebody. Strong. Not a good delivery by Strong. This one striking him on the on the pad appeal but it seems as if it may have come off the inside edge let's look at the replay yes inside edge onto the toe two deliveries by Stra. two singles he's doing his job here effectively for his team a very good job here bowling at the back end for a number of years for his team um his team missed him for a couple of uh, tournaments but he's back now and he's doing a fantastic job here one for five one point two overs bowl Bowling his few last deliveries. And I want to stop by Shallow there. Bye. Not an easy take for him. Um, Bounced several times in front of him, but at least he got his body behind it and prevent, prevented any, um, any extra runs than the single. Brought there by the wicket keeper, Shallow. Master with the number 14 on his back. He's doing the wicket keeping for the divers. Oh, and this one is a good... Oh, look at that. Look at that. Can't and they're going to look for the three. Look at the three. Another yeah. trip to the stump. The misses again. <laughs> they should just hold the ball now. <laughs> yeah, Several mean. opportunities for a wicket <laughs> in that over. Everything seems to go wrong there. Look at that. From the keeper. Misses the stump. From the bowler. Misses the stump. Picks up there by the feeler coming in. Throws at the stump again. Misses. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Come your fairs there. But <laughs> 73 for 7. Strikers would take that. Another delivery. Misses the stump again. Would it be a repeat? <laughs> this, this time he should be run out. Yes, this time he should be run out. And so that's the that's the end of Lavia's innings. He was, um, he was flirting with danger quite a few times in that over. And he finally got run out. Missed to the keeper. Shaw backing up. Throws to the stump. He's gone by a mile. So great work there by Shaw. Backing up properly. And strikers have lost another wicket through the run out route. And they are 73 for 7. It's only, not looking too good here. And only two deliveries left in the over. And in the innings. So the divers will be breathing a sigh of relief. They will think to themselves that they have almost gotten half of the job done and they have the second half to do. I know who would be feeling very good on the field there would be um, higher and shallow because he'll be thinking to himself, well, I don't have to go helter-skelter from ball one. I have not made any runs in the, in the tournament so far and I have the opportunity to actually get a knock-in and build an innings. And you know, he has a mindset to say, you know, every tournament he really wants to be the top scorer. So he'll be very disappointed with his output so far in this tournament. Well, 73 is on the board. One delivery remaining. He's been said the runs on the board is runs on the board. You never know this is the game of cricket. Game of glorious uncertainties. One inning's been, complicate, been completed here now. Another, uh, another delivery by ran there by the two batters. So that would take the score up to 74. So at the end of over, number 10, 74 for 8, strikers don't think that's enough runs at all. We need to get 75, which is an, a run rate at 7.5 for over. And uh, they have fallen short of where they would have wanted to be at the beginning of the innings. But after five overs, they were 21 for four after five overs. So in the last five overs, they scored 53 runs, which, kind of, uh, which has brought them back into contention somewhat. Um, although we think that 74 runs is, is quite a long way shy of where they would have wanted to be. So just to recap the innings, 
um, the, quite a bit of wickets to speak about here. Um, so, just to recap the innings, we had um, the dismissal of Myers Bascom. He was caught Braxy Brown, bowl Abraham for 9 of 15 deliveries. Hackshaw was caught Joseph, bowl Abraham for 2 of 9 deliveries. Thirteen, he was caught Hooper, bowl Edwards of, for 6 of 6 deliveries. James was run out um, facing two balls to get one run. Um, Williams, he really actually gave the, the, the score some respectability. He was caught Hooper, bowl Joseph um, for 31 of 9 deliveries. Hector was caught shallow, bowl Joseph for 10 of 7 deliveries. And Richards was caught Hooper, bowl Stra for 2 of 3 deliveries. Lavier was run out for 4 of 6 deliveries. And not out was um, Jordan. And... Uh, we, just, see, we see there for the grinding divers, the bowling hooper, he bowled two overs, none for two. Abraham, two overs, two for nine. Wiley, one over, none for nine. And the over that really, really uh, brought them back in the game was Edwards. He took one for 26 in his solitary over. And that really um, added some impetus to the innings for the strikers. Joseph, two overs, two for 17. And Straw finishing off as he usually does, one for eight off his two overs. Some really good cricket here by the divers here this morning, restricting, restricting the four Charles strikers to 74, 74 for eight in their 10 overs. They need to get 75 at their turn of the crease, but cricket is a game of glory and certainties. Um, what would happen in this innings, we don't know until such time. Alanson? Yeah, so when by Lavia and they take a single, so they have gotten going off the first delivery. One without loss. Well, and Hooper into strike. Well, I say Hooper, he's up the order today. He's batting, he's opening, batting with, with um, Kato. Um, his role and function would be what? I'm not too sure whether to be the attacking batsman or to bat through the innings. They have a target of just about 75 from 59 deliveries. What would be his role here as skipper? I think that somebody needs to take charge of the power play, go hard, and really take the game of the, out of the striker's hands. Good delivery there by John. Just pitching around middle and next stump, moving away. Um, defended a bit gingerly there by, by Hooper. Well, that was a good delivery. Just on the line of the off stump, um, Hooper was probably looking for a little... More pace on that one, so he had to he have to take his bottom hand off of it, really to control it. But a good delivery by Jordan to him. This time he defends to the man at point, Thornton. So no run, a good start so far by Ray. Three deliveries, only one run. Well, you have, this is the first time I've seen Ray Jordan open the bowling for strikers for this season. Um, bowling the first over normally would have been Rashid. On the other end, but they have a small target, and Ray Jordan is one of their key bowlers, so they go to him very early, which is a sensible move by Bascom. This one is left alone by Asif outside the off stump. The difference with the two innings is that they can take this approach because they know they have to make 75. The difference with the previous innings is that after three or four overs they are of being behind, the strikers... They will think, be still thinking in their mind, we need somehow to get to 100, we need to get to 80, we need to get to 90. Um, so at least when you're batting second, you know what you have to get. Yes, indeed. This one is whipped just for out of square, um, uppishly, but um, single taken there. Well, two, they have time for two, as the throw comes in now. So two runs to Hooper. He's now off the mark. So three without loss, one delivery remaining in the first over. Yeah, good over so far by Jordan. Um, all in a couple of dot deliveries. Good one outside the off stump, lifting to the wicket keeper. Really good pace off the wicket uh, as the wickets, wicket keep playing very, very good. Good for batting, good for bowling. Whatever you put in, you will get out. So a good start for him so far um, with the new ball. Good delivery. Just short of York length, but swinging. That, that inward movement that he gets to the right hand and a little away from the left hand. We saw that evident there. So three from the first over. Three without loss. They need 72 or 54, um, the Grenadine Divers. Yeah, I still think that they need to take advantage of this power play, really. Um, not putting themselves in a, any position that they would have to um, 
accelerate beyond what they're supposed to, but this power play, I think that the Gundin divers should really take advantage of it and put themselves in a very good position when it comes to the middle overs. Yes, they, don't need, they don't need to do what the strikers did and create any pressure. If we're in agreement with you there, and uh, most likely it will be Rashid bowling this over, waiting to see if he'll make his way to the bowling crease. If they don't take advantage of this power play, they would cause themselves to be in some trouble in the middle overs, um, putting themselves under pressure to score beyond what they, 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 supposed to, what they were asked to do. Um, they have to be careful as to how they go about getting the 74 runs. The run is, is already on the board. They have to play smartly. They have to play sensibly cricket and bring it home. It's not a big target, but you have to play sensibly, take advantage of situations and circumstances like this one. Power play, two feelers outside, make use of it. So Rashid will be bowling the second over. I think they would need to take a little bit more of aggressive, an aggressive approach in this over. They do not want the pressure to mount on them and have um, some very quiet overs in the power play. Uh, so let's see what Kato's approach will be. I think he'll be going after Rashid in this over. Oh, good delivery. That one pitch just outside leg stump with the angle went across, but it also got just a little bit of turn as well. And a good length. Jaffa pitched on the leg stump, going across the batsman, turn and bounce. Really nice delivery. Single taken as this one was turned behind square on the onside. So good start so far from the four Charlotte strikers. And that is what they want to do. They want to create pressure on, on, on the divers. And if they create that pressure, it would bring, or it would cause the divers to lose a couple of wickets. And then the strikers would bring themselves back into this game. So the Grenadine divers have to be very careful as to how they go about this power play. They can't be too careful and they can't put themselves under pressure. They need to express themselves, put themselves in a position that in the middle overs you just have to take ones and twos to get to the end of um of the total so hoop on strike now good delivery again there by by rashid he was looking to hit that one down the ground through the long on area well bowled by rashid so a good start here by the two opening bowlers um i would say the two best bowlers on the on um in the attack early here in this game. This one called wide down the leg side. By umpire Bayam missing that leg stump. So five without loss. It was pretty close to the leg stump, but you know the umpires have been quite severe on anything down the leg side for quite a while now in cricket actually. This one is driven through extra cover four runs, lovely shot all along the ground, exquisite timing Classical, and we'll just say short boy. Yeah, classical cover drive by, by Hooper. By Hooper. Pitched up, flighty delivery by Fredericks. Just came on the front foot and drove it nicely to the covers. Out on the longer portion of the boundary, into the fence before. No trouble there. No trouble there at all. But what, what, what is important as well is that divers need to get these runs in quick timing because of run weight as well. And this one is pulled behind square. It will challenge the boundary. Good feeling by Thornton. Quick across the ground. And he actually keeps it to one. Really should have been two runs there. Yeah, that, that's, these are the little things that comes into the game at the end of it. Where you turn off single down, you miss feel, one goes here. And then when you look at the game, you make an a, 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 um, a assessment of the game. You realize that if he had taken that one, things would have been better. These are the things that you can't, mistakes you can't be making. Should not be out. We're pitching way outside leg stump. Even if it may have been threatening the stumps, it was pitched way outside leg stump. And the batsman once offering a shot should not be given out LBW. The correct decision is made. So at the end of two overs, it's 10 without loss. They're going at five runs and over, which is um, just a little bit better than what um, the strikers were going at. They were eight after three overs, actually. Um, so they had a, a very a very slow start, almost um, what we would call... Um, a snail-like pace, you know. 
but these the, the, the I would I would think that they need to maximize these other two overs. Try to get probably um twenty from the two overs and get themselves to around thirty or so. Um having um forty five to make in the last six overs. Yeah, um, required rate is eight point one three and the current rate is five. Um five runs are over in a T T ten game is, is not in my opinion, not really acceptable, especially in the power play. Um, you're chasing a target of just about 75, yes, but there are situations and circumstances in the shorter version of the game that you have to take advantage of. Power play is one. Yes, and I'm thinking that right now um, Captain Bascom will be smiling because he's thinking that if they continue with this, uh, this approach and for the next uh, two, three overs or so, then we'll be right in with the game and could put some pressure on the divers at the back end. The divers would not be doing themselves any, any um, favours by batting the way they are batting here. All they are doing is bringing back strikers into the game, giving them a sniff um, of, of getting themselves back in the game or just looking for victory. So Joshua James is into the bowling. This one actually goes over the stump. So I doubt it will be called why by umpire Blaze, a good umpire. He currently had judged that one as, as if it was going across the, to the offside. So that delivery to start by Joshua James. He would need to do well with the ball here to give his team a chance in this game. Yes, um, if he bows another tidy over here, it creates even more pressure on the divers. And the divers and, and, and the, they would have one more over in the power play. So he needs to bowl a steady over here. And this one has been pulled well in front of square. One bounce, four runs. It's a bit too short, bowling at that medium pace from James. And he was dispatched by Hooper, who is very strong on the pull. Yeah, that's one of just, just on the length, as you can see here. Short, easy, easy for, for, for Hooper to pull through mid-wicket. And he did that with ease into the fence for four. Carries his total to 11 from 10. They need a few more of these in these um, just another 1.4 overs in the power play. They need to be more attacking. Not just sit back and wait. They need to be more attacking. Take the game to the strikers. The strikers are low on confidence. And a good power play would just take them out of the game um, thoroughly. Absolutely. And you have the wickets in hand. So they could go um, hard at, at, at these overs. Little conversation there between James and his skipper as to how they should approach the remainder of the over with Asif on strike. Last delivery being struck for four. This one is on the leg stump again, and I would say it looks like he would get a single. I would say that he is lucky to get away with that because both feelers behind square on the on side are in the circle. So he was very fortunate there. Right or left of those feelers is gone into the fence for four. Another uh, just an ordinary delivery by James, as you could see, pitch outside the leg stump. He just needed to tickle that just past the keeper and would have run into the fence for four. But he got away with it. There's another single. And that brings Kato into strike. Kato, who needs to get going here in this tournament, he's two from four deliveries. And, and at this stage, you were eight without loss. Grenadine Divers are 15 without loss. So we now take you um, to Benava Brown. Let's see who she has uh, for us in the, in the crowd. Hi, we're coming live from the Mike Finley stand. So how are you enjoying the match? Oh, it's a lovely match so far. Thanks. Very exciting. Not too exciting. I was here on Sunday. In, um, strikers. Um, I could. I think we could do much better. And we could be tight in the field. So, who are you supporting? Um, overall, I think Explorers. They've been pretty consistent so far. So, yeah. And who are you supporting? but I still have my eye on Rangers. Well, enjoy the rest of the match, ladies. Thank you. Back to broadcasting. Yes, thank you very much, Benava. And uh, uh, that one was just struck for four by Roland Cato. He was advancing down the wicket and he hit that one just far out of square on the onside, beating the man at the deep mid-wicket position. So they are now 19 
um, in the, um, for, for, without loss after 2.5. And uh, as I said, they would want to get about probably 30, 35 or so from the power play. And that would put them in pole position for the remaining six overs. Yeah, they need to be more positive here um, in the power play. And it carries a momentum into the other game as well. You can't just sedately sit and bat. You have to be more aggressive, more attacking. Score runs. Like this that. one has been hit a long way. It was in his half. It was right up in the slot. And Kato has said, well, get over on my side. I'm dealing with you today. That's the kind of batting you need in a power play. 25 without loss, three overs, you're chasing a target of 74. You need to be in a better position than you were prior. So he has taken the advantage of that delivery, pitched up in his half, and he really um, crashed into that over the long and bungy for six. A really good over for, for, the, for the divers. Yes, and, and that 15 runs came off that over by James. He kind of reminds me a little bit of, about, um, of Kyron, um, Kyron Pollard. He's a big man, but he bowls quite gently. I, I think that he could add a yard or two to, of pace. Um, he's a young man, so um, I think he could add a yard or two of pace to make him a more effective all-round all um, all cricketer. Yeah. Um, well, that is left for the coaches <laughs> to do, um, to spot also. Um, he's a big lad. Um, probably one or two different techniques and show him as to what is what, what and what a yard or two pace could be added to him. But... Um, as you say, he has very a lot of potential as a youngster. He bats well, as uh, uh, as we know, and he bowls a pretty good medium pace. So at this point, we are at 25 without loss. And at that stage, the strikers were 8 without loss. And again, I'm just thinking about the effect that those first three overs of the game have had on... on on where we are now and what will be the outcome. outcome. And if you had any doubts, just look at your screen. They were eight without loss after three overs. This one looking for the big shot there was Asif. And that one had a little bit of turn on it. Good delivery there by Frederick. Well, something to notice as well. Something to notice from the surface. The ball is really turning and it has some bounce as well. So Rashid is bowling a pretty slower delivery that hits the wickets and turn, as you could see prayer, prayer deliveries on the last one that he bowled. The wicket is taking some turn. And this is something that we have seen from this trip. Last two VPLs. Off a little bit for the spinner. But still a very good batting track. I mean, gets a bit more turn. He was looking to hit that one over the onside, but the turn was quite sharp, so it defeated the inside edge. And it's called wide. Wide adjudicated there by umpire Byam. So it's 27 without loss. After three overs, they'll be more pleased with this run rate. Um, approaching nine runs and over. And I'm sure that they will be able to accelerate if they have wickets in hand as they draw closer to the total. At, um, further down the road as well, Aronson, where you, you go into a tournament where there are a couple of teams that are close in points and a net run rate. You need to get these small targets as fast as possible with it, losing the least wicket as possible. So, based on how the Grenadine Divers bat here, this could affect them later on in the tournament as well. Absolutely, and uh, as that one is pulled around for a single. Uh, and though if the strikers are able to make this a tight game uh, and uh, even if they end up losing they would have out of their four losses if they end up losing have three very tight finishes so if they end up in a run rate tussle then they will be um, in a more favorable position than anyone who uh, may end up in the same position if they continue like this Are the little things that makes a difference at the end of the day, Alison, when it comes to the shorter version of the game, the way that you approach your power play, the way that you bowl in a particular area, um, how quickly you get your runs, and, and these sort of things. You need to have those things in place. And this one is a top edge. Should be caught. It's actually dropped. And almost a chance for a run out. The Asif was already, you know, angry with himself for being dismissed. Now, 
Credit, I, I would also give some credit to Frederick. He's bowling well. Um, there's as if he was looking to hit that one across the line um, through the mid-wicket region. Uh, almost could have been run out there. Would have been poor cricket if that had happened. Um, not, not really reacting as he's supposed to, as if. Had lost his wicket in that effort, he, should have, he would have been blaming himself for such. Not a good delivery there by Rashid. Credit must be given to him because at least not to show that in the first over they were as aggressive as they ought to have been, his first over. But in this over, they have been looking to get at him. But his lines and lengths, his pace, um, they, they have been good. And another dot delivery. So at the end of four overs, it's 29 without loss. So um, by the performance of Rashid, he actually still gives his team a chance by not conceding too many in the power play. Well, um, he has done well for his team bowling the new ball, Rashid. Um, just one wide um, coming from that, the two singles and the other dot balls. He's bowled two very good overs for strikers up front there. And the Grenadine Divers are 29 without loss here in this the second half of this game. After four overs, the power play have been completed. And from here on in, we would see where the divers go. What would they do? What, is, what would be their approach? But 29 from 24 deliveries, I think they should have done a little bit better. And the young man, the young player, under 19 player, will be brought into the bowling attack. Elox. Well, in a difficult situation. Um, and they will definitely be trying to go after him here, even though the power play has ended. At this stage, the strikers were 12 for 2, so they only went at 3 runs and over in the power play, which I think, of course, is unforgivable. And 29 without loss in pursuit of 75 for victory. They need another 46 runs from 6 overs. And the feelers out, you have a deep backward square leg. British mid-wicket and the mid-wicket. All of them on the boundary. He's bowling left arm spin. And he also has a long on out. So four feelers on the boundary on the leg side. And uh, there is also a long off. Now with the right hand on strike, let's see the feel that his captain gives him. Well, he's bowling to the feel that is set. He has men deep on the on side. So the bowls are just about bowl the ball just about middle and leg. Where the, where the batters have to pull him into the onside. So that's a good start from the youngster. At least he's understanding what his job and his, his function is and his role as, as a bowler here. For the right hander, there's a sweeper cover, uh, mid, a long off, um, uh, long on, a straightish mid wicket, and a deep square leg. The others are in the circle. Time it's pulled into the gap, should be cut off though. Yes, it's cut off by James. They jog through for the single. Not to show I'm pleased and about, about the running that I've seen from these, um, these two. Even if they put a little pressure on, on the fielder, they may be able to make, get a fumble and get an extra. You have to keep the intensity up, even if it's a small score. Yes, you need to be aggressive. aggressive in your running as well. Slow delivery one. And they flight it on the stump. The young man is mixing up his pace. He's a tall, lanky bowler, um, left arm spinner, very tall, still young, he may put on a few kilos yet, <laughs> and, but he's, he's bowling to his field. He has been adjusting well to both left and right and the base on the field so far in this his first over, and he's bowling in a pressure situation as well. He's a young cricketer, but he's an he's a intelligent cricketer as well. Um, I had him under my control on a 15 coming up. He's pretty smart. Um, he understands his game as well. So he's only 16 years old. Yeah, he just came out of under 15. Yes, just young came man. out of under 15. Six foot five. Six foot five inches. Well, if he's 16 and six foot five, when he's 20, maybe uh, another three inches taller. This one is hit down too long on, but short of the feeler there. Full delivery. Not a bad start so far from the young man. Five deliveries, five runs. If he finishes here without the boundary, he, was, well, he, has, he has done his job in this over. Well, 
as a youngster coming into your first game, six, um, 16 years old, you take that any day? Slow that there again. You, he's bowling at the right sort of pace. And he reminds me of what Luke is doing as well for, um, for the, the Explorers. Because that same length that he just bowled, if he had bowled it a little quicker, then Kato would have been able to go down the ground. But because it was so slow, he had to wait on it and ended up playing the back foot shot instead. Yes, um, both Luke, Wilson and Hillux, they both were in the under-15 team. They have just graduated to the under-19 teams. They were very effective bowlers at the under-15 tournament. They actually were the top bowlers during those tournaments. So they coming to the, um, the four here in VPL is, is very nice to see that the youngsters are continuing playing cricket and doing as well as they were doing before. A new bowler is, is Richie, Richie Richards. Every time I call his name, I almost end up saying Richie Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> because when you think Richie in cricket, um, that name comes to mind automatically. But Richie Richards, he'll be bowling to Asif Hooper. You're very familiar with Asif. They hail from um, the same part of the country. Um, you'll be looking to try to contain him here to add some pressure. 41 needed from 30, which should be quite easy to get. Um, I would think that Asif and, uh, and Kato, that they would want to um, press the gas, so to speak, in this over. Well, it's all good that you win this game, you know, but it's the fashion and as to how you win the game, you know, is a, is a momentum carrying on into the other game. And um, divers have to be very careful as to how they go about this game. Yes, you want to win the game, but you have to be positive about it. one is pulled around to the left side when we outside the off some to pull this um, all along the ground so single taken to the man at square leg there Hector 35 without loss 5.2 overs gone 40 needed from 28 deliveries uh, Richards is in his first over having bowled two deliveries so far Anyway, if you were the captain of the, the four child strikers, what would you be doing for the remaining overs, trying to, to basically pull a rabbit out of a hat here in this situation? Well, the bowlers are doing a pretty good job for them here. They're keeping it rather tight. They're not giving away the boundaries. Um, Skipper Miles Bascom is um, marshalling the troops. He's trying to get this um, game as close as possible to 10 overs because you know at the end of the day, economics would come into play. And he has another four games or so to play and he would want to be in the best position um, when it comes to that. He has had some scores over 100 plus, so he knows that his run rate is pretty good. This one is pulled, just back of square, misfield, and they're going to take the extra run. <laughs> Sloppy work there by Seelroy, he, he was doing well um, in, in, well he did very well in his batting, 31 of 9 deliveries, he'd be disappointed with that, not a good look. To runs taken by Kato. This has been something that I've been featuring with the, the strikers feeling. They have not been thorough, thorough when it comes to feeling. They have made a few mistakes. They have dropped a few catches uh, uh, and it no. has cost them. That's a lovely shot there played by Kato. The gap wasn't that large. The delivery was a bit short. He went onto the back foot, stepped away, gave himself some room and was able to cut it in the gap all along the ground. Nice conventional cricket shot four lovely runs to Roland Kato. Kato have gotten a few starts here in, in, this, in the VPL for this season. Um, he has started well, but he doesn't carry on. So in this innings, he needs to carry his bat to the end of the innings, really. Um, for, for, for the diver's sake and for his sake as well, he needs to carry the bat in to the end. He has started, but at the end of the day, he has fallen short. So he needs to bat well here, take them over the line. How does Richie respond? Um, still no one out. Okay, they're putting sweeper cover out now. And they're bringing up the extra feeler on the onside. So two feelers on the onside behind square in the ring. Short fine leg. And uh, a, a backward square leg in the ring. And this time he should be caught. Yes, swinging. And this one, it seemed to just, you know, make double contact with the bat. The bat pulled it around to the man at short fine leg. And you, you, you were just mentioning him, I think, um, 
<laughs> you just mentioned him, um, Kenroy, and that shot, for it to go there, he will feel very aggrieved and feel very hard done in terms of his luck. Well, um, I don't know if it's the commentator's course or what, as they normally say, but Keita goes back to the, to the Pavilion for 21, another start to his innings, and then he goes out. Um, he did another 34 runs from 24 bars, really, as one of the top batters he should be carrying the mantle of bringing it home, as Fletcher did yesterday. Unfortunately, he's out, caught, um, trying to pull that one. But the divers are now 41 for one, 5.5 overs, and that brings the hard hitting Brown to the crease with Skipper Hooper. So, Shem Brown comes out to bat. Um, he has batted in, uh, in the opening position in all the previous editions of the VPL. And I'm just going to look for some of his stats just to bring up for, um, for, for the benefit of the viewers. But now... Those of us who are, just, who are just joining us, welcome to the VPL Day 6, Game 11. This is VPL 4.0 and we have a fantastic day so far we had um some intriguing cricket over the past four or five days or so and it continues here at Arnesville playing field we have a battle between grenadine divers and the strikers here they are 41 for one they need to get a, talk, a target of 74 74 here at Arnesville. um the strikers have not put any points on the board so far divers have won one so it's a ding dong battle We'll get the stats after the end of the over for Shem Brown He's facing his first delivery. On this one down the leg side. The dive has to come out. Well done by the skipper. Single taken. If that had beaten him, it would have been hard pressed to, to, to reel it in. Some tough feeling there by skipper Myers Bascom. Just tickled off the legs and you see Myers Bascom. He's a tall fella bringing the dive out. Really good um, dive by him. Excellent feeling. And that is what you want to see from feelers in this tournament putting themselves on, I mean, on the edge, diving, stopping balls, cutting off singles, cutting off the boundaries. These are the things that help you in your game and at the end of the day, they would count. So the divers, they are 42 for one after six overs, going at seven runs and over. Hooper is on 17 of 19 deliveries, actually going at below a strike rate of 100. And Brown facing his first delivery, he, had, um, he has taken a single. So he'll be facing the young man and so far he has played 30 matches, Brown. And had 30 innings, uh, 489 runs, 53 runs, 53 is high score. So 150, um, 18.81 his average and a strike rate of 134. 48 fours and 27 sixes. Shem Brown. That tells you the kind of batter he's here. he is. He looks for the ropes, over the ropes. High percentage of boundaries in his 489 runs. Shem Brown, we know him as a dasher what he comes to do and that is what he will do the ball is in his half he's gonna hit you over the top once it, once it is in his range he takes advantage of it he looks to continue this one is cut away officially sent back there by by brown like he wants to strike <laughs> captain hooper Dot delivery. So two dot deliveries here by the young man who has started off well. And uh, these little dot deliveries, they're building up some pressure. They're bringing the game back closer and closer. This, this is just some smart bowling by the young son. Just outside the house, he's bowling to his field and he's doing well. Good delivery again. That one was Yorker length. He saw him move across quite early and drop that one around mid and leg stump on the toes. Um, just around the crease area in terms of length. And I like what I'm seeing from the young man. Yes, um, he just took the pace off that one arm. Um, Brown looking to hike him over mid wicket and he couldn't get under that one. It resulted in a single. So, some smart bowling here by Hillox. He has bowled one over so, 1.3 over so far for six runs. A beautiful introduction for him here at VPL. And everybody up here now is wondering where was he for the, the, the first few games. Don't see him not playing from here on after this bowling so far. He's done a good job so far as he, as he, as he continues to, to um, apply his trade. Driven nicely by Hooper down to the man on the boundary. 
Feel It There by James. It jocked the singer again, so no intensity. And that one actually had a, 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 an awkward bounce to James. So they, they, they have run quickly. They may have been able to put some pressure on him. That is what we're talking about. You have to attack the game. You have to be positive. You have to be, you have to be aggressive. You have to take every run like you want a second run. These are things that you need to do. Practice them. Bring them into the game. This one is six runs. Has been struck for six. It will go over. The wind will carry it. It, has, it went high and the wind will aid it to go over the rope. So Brown has said, well, I've had enough. I'm coming down. That one actually beat him for flight. Came off the top of the bat, but the swing was hard enough for it to get over the rope. Well, Brown said, I'm coming at you. Um, no matter what you bowl here, I'm coming at you. What a good delivery by Hillocks, but Brown had the better of him, bringing him straight back over the bump, over the along our friends into the fence for six. A well bowled by him. He's gone again. Yeah, that one was an error. That one was a little experience from the young man. After um, being struck, he adjusted his line and adjusted his length, but he went to full. And that one now is what Brown has been waiting for, something in his half. The last one, he had to make the length by coming out of the, um, his crease, but this one was right in his half for him to swing through the line, and that he did with glee. That is what normally happens when you create pressure. And bowlers, um, they tend to make mistakes. And you have to be aggressive. You have to come to them. Once you, once you come to these bowlers, attack them, they would make mistakes. And you would take advantage of that. Brown did that. And the youngster fell for the trap. Went over the fence twice. But uh, not, a, not a bad spell from him so far. Except for the last two deliveries or so. But um, a good introduction for him. Yes, I think that he has done well. Um, the young man, 16 years old. And we have seen that he has some nose. 